What is a snake's favorite subject in school? Why it's history. <laughs> Let's get started. Uh, the, the Harlem Renaissance is our video for the day. Uh, let's see here. The, remember, we're going to recall the Great Migration. Uh, what is the Harlem Renaissance? Why might one say that Marcus Garvey and the UNIA is a prequel to the civil rights movement of the 50s and 60s? Who are some, some of the big contributors to the Harlem Renaissance and what were their contributions? How did African Americans contribute to the jazz era? Key vocab, we've already seen Great Migration at the bottom there, but Harlem Renaissance and Langston Hughes. We're going to revisit the Great Migration to start off the day. And the main reason why is I want to give you a sense of why this is happening at this time. The reason behind the Great Migration and why it happened at this time has to do with an emerging attitude among African Americans. And that attitude is summed up well with the phrase, black is beautiful. That's a phrase we will hear uh, uh, more often in the 1960s, 70s, during the Civil Rights Movement. But that attitude is emerging during this time. And it's going to encourage many African Americans in the South to take a chance and seek opportunities elsewhere. And that has, has them head to northern cities. This is an important factor because when you consider what the push factors are for uh, African Americans leaving the South, they are push factors that have been around for a long time. So one reason would be because of racial violence. That's the reason why they leave the South, but that's been there for a long time. But this new attitude is really saying, let's do something more about it. And that's one thing that they're trying to escape. Economic discrimination is another thing that they're trying to escape. So those are push factors that have many leaving the South. As for pull factors, the job opportunities that exist in the North are enticing for many. That's going to be a reason why they want to go to the North. The other part of that would be the pay is better in the North. Again, more reasons to go seek out, um, you know, you get pushed out of the South, but here are reasons that are pulling you to the North. Ultimately, the reality for those that do go North and into the Northern cities is a harsh one. Uh, when they get there, they are going to face discrimination, lots of it. Part of the reason is because of that economic aspect that they are uh, trying to achieve with job opportunities. And if other people feel like their jobs are threatened, they tend to blame somebody. Good example of that here. Uh, this discrimination leads to uh, lots of violence. It's going to lead to them uh, either becoming impoverished or joining poverty. And that all is going to lead to a number of race rights, riots throughout different cities in the United States. Let's take a look at civil rights during the time. The Roaring Twenties is almost an original civil rights movement since whenever civil rights is mentioned, most people often think of the 1950s and 60s with Martin Luther King and other historical figures of the time. But there is a civil rights movement happening during the 1920s, which makes a lot of sense since this is a time period where African Americans themselves are celebrating their culture, their heritage, their writings, their music, etc. Let's take a look at two organizations then. And the first is the NAACP or the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. It was founded by WED. E.B. Du Bois, who we learned about in the first unit, it is going to protest racial violence, which is happening across the nation. And the organization is also still in existence today. So it's had a long lasting run and will continue to do so probably for quite a while. The focus of the group is to better the lives of blacks and also 
to focus on black pride. Again, black is beautiful. That phrase, that attitude. The other group I want to mention is the UNIA, which is the Universal Negro Improvement Association. And this association is headed up by Marcus Garvey. Uh, Marcus Garvey is more radical. He does have the black pride similarity that the NAACP has. However, that more radical view is takes on a separatist idea. So that separat separatist idea means that he believes blacks in the United States should make their way back to Africa. That is the UNIA. What's interesting about the civil rights movement in the 1920s is you have these different ideas on what African Americans should do or where they should go with their future within the movement itself. It's similar to what we see in the civil rights movement later in the 1950s and 60s. Now let's take a more specific look at the Harlem part of the Harlem Renaissance. And at this time, the, uh, the city of Harlem is the black capital of the United States. And it's in Harlem that we're going to see many uh, middle class educated uh, blacks, not only from the United States, but also from some other parts of the world, including south of the United States. This is where they're going to come congregate and talk about problems. They're going to celebrate the African American culture that is theirs. This is very much a part or the central location of the Harlem Renaissance. One writer of the Harlem Renaissance era was the was a uh, writer Claude McKay. Claude McKay is someone who writes about the uh, really the need for resistance to prejudice and the need for resistance against uh, discrimination. And this is part of that civil rights movement. Uh, that is taking place. Another writer is, and the most famous writer is the man above me there on screen, is Langston Hughes. Langston Hughes writes a lot about the difficult lives of African Americans in general and on the whole. What both of these writers and many more have in common is this is all, all their work is grounded in that black pride and pride in uh, the culture of African Americans. Even though the roots of jazz are in New Orleans, and that's where the music really found its beginnings, New York City has what ends up being the most popular nightclub during the Prohibition era, and that is the Cotton Club. The Cotton Club is found in Har Harlem and had many famous musicians, jazz musicians of the time uh, go through there. As far as just some of the most famous jazz musicians on the whole, a couple of the standouts were uh, Louis Armstrong, who is known for not only great jazz, but he puffs up his cheeks real big when he plays. Another one is Bessie Smith, who we talk about in class. She's a blues singer, we're going to hear one of her songs, uh, which really digs at the, uh, at the problems that blacks go through and the discrimination that they uh, face uh, on a daily basis and the violence that exists. And then finally, Duke Ellington, who's a composer and pianist as well. <clears throat> the one thing that can be said about jazz music is it makes its way into white culture, or at least this is a good thing to end on. And it's not the first time we're going to see this jazz music affect heavily white American music and pop culture. Later on, we'll see this with rock and roll. That's it. Have a good one.